ground plane high-speed maglev connects China's five major first-tier cities. Beijing to Guangzhou, 3.3 hours. Shanghai to Shenzhen, 2.5 hours. Guangzhou to Hong Kong, 20 minutes. Shenzhen to Guangzhou, 15 minutes. Such an exploding speed is a vague future scenario revealed in China's recently disclosed high-speed maglev route plan. A high-speed maglev network with a speed of up to 600 km per hour is emerging, which will completely connect China's five major first-tier cities. In this video, let us learn more about it. When hearing about maglev, many people's first reaction may be, doesn't China already have maglev? Indeed, China has previously built three maglev railways, namely the Shanghai Maglev, Beijing Subway S1 line, and Changsha Maglev Express. However, they all belong to medium-low speed magnetic levitation. The speed of Shanghai Maglev has dropped from the maximum speed of 430 km per hour to 300 km per hour, the speed of Changsha Maglev Express is 140 km per hour, and the speed of Beijing Subway S1 line is only 100 km per hour. It makes no sense to build such medium and low speed maglev lines between Beijing Guangzhou and Shanghai Shenzhen. High speed magnetic levitation is completely different. Its design speed is generally above 600 km per hour. It can be said to be the king of land transportation. It has the title of aircraft on the ground, and its speed is approaching that of airplanes. You know, the speed of ordinary civilian passenger aircraft is only about 800 km per hour. Imagine taking the high-speed maglev from Beijing to Guangzhou in 3.3 hours. Civil aviation generally takes about 3 hours, plus check-in, waiting time, weather uncertainty, and other factors. How many people will give up flying and take the high-speed maglev instead? At present, the most likely project to be built first is the wide-depth section of the high-speed maglev. Last year, Chen Xiangsheng, an academician of the Chinese Academy of Engineering, revealed that the Shanghai Hangzhou, Chengdu Chongqing, and Guangzhou Shenzhen metropolitan areas are competing for the construction of maglev lines. Among them, the passenger flow density of the main axis of Guangzhou, Shenzhen and Hong Kong has become saturated as early as 2017. It is estimated that by 2035, the passenger flow density on the main axis of Guangzhou, Shenzhen and Hong Kong will reach 260 million people, leaving a capacity gap of approximately 40 million people. Therefore, a new expressway project is needed to meet the transportation needs of Guangzhou, Shenzhen and Hong Kong, and to balance and satisfy the passenger flow connections between the main urban centers of the eight cities in the Greater Bay Area. In fact, China's current research and development of high-speed maglev transportation systems has made breakthroughs and is technically feasible. It just needs to be improved from aspects such as territorial spatial planning, cost investment, and engineering challenges. What areas will this upcoming high-speed maglev super transportation network cover, and which cities will benefit from it? Recently, Guangzhou released its 2035 Comprehensive Transportation Plan, revealing important information about high-speed maglev routes. Guangzhou has reserved three high-speed maglev channels for this purpose. On the main channels, 18 cities have appeared in official planning documents. Beijing Hong Kong Macau Channel, Guangzhou, Xiaoguan, Changsha, Wuhan, Zhengzhou, Shijiazhuang, Beijing, Foshan, Zhuhai, Macau. Shanghai, Shenzhen, Guangzhou Channel, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Shantou, Shanwei, Fuzhou, Ningbo, Shanghai. Guangzhou Shenzhen Hong Kong Channel, Guangzhou, Dongguan, Shenzhen, and Hong Kong.
These cities have great opportunities to integrate into this high-speed maglev transportation network and usher in another leap forward. After all, connecting five major first-tier cities at the same time is an unimaginably huge opportunity for each city. Of course, cities that have not yet been publicly disclosed will definitely still have opportunities. In fact, not only cities, but also many districts, counties and even towns and streets may get a share of the pie. The battle for the city over the high-speed maglev channel has already begun quietly. Take the Guangzhou-Shenzhen-Hong Kong corridor as an example. The situation is currently uncertain, and multiple route plans are still in the process of scientific demonstration and competition among all parties. Shenzhen Futian District has proposed to carry out planning research on the Xiangmi Lake Maglev hub as soon as possible, hoping that the high-speed maglev can directly connect to Futian. Guangzhou Nansha District has also proposed to reserve the Guangzhou Shenzhen Hong Kong Expressway Maglev Channel and station establishment conditions from Guangzhou East Railway Station to Nansha District, hoping to open up the rail corridor. The cruel side is that the final winner cannot be all cities. How difficult is it technically to build a high-speed maglev? How much does it cost? Will ticket prices be very expensive in the future? Many people are concerned about these issues. In 2021, China's 600 km per hour high-speed maglev system with completely independent intellectual property rights will officially roll off the assembly line in Qingdao. It can be said that 30 years have passed since Southwest Jiaotong University built China's first maglev railway test line in 1994. Today, China has complete technical preparations for high-speed maglev. China's high-speed maglev has entered the high-speed line test stage from the research and development stage and will gradually transition to the demonstration operation and industrialization development stage. A new Hyperloop era is about to emerge. Of course, since high-speed maglev has higher technical standards, the cost will not be cheap. It is conservatively estimated that the cost of high-speed maglev per kilometer is more than 300 million yuan. This is more than double the average construction cost of China's high-speed railways of 117 to 144 million per kilometer. However, although the high-speed maglev has high initial construction costs, it also has its own advantages in terms of later operation and maintenance costs. Because the train is suspended on the track and is not in direct contact with the track, its service life will be longer than that of high-speed rail. The design life of high-speed rail is 20 years, and the maintenance cost for the entire life cycle of a train with a speed of 350 km per hour is two to three times that of purchasing a car. The maglev train that will roll off the assembly line in Qingdao in 2021 will be maintenance-free for 30 years. Shanghai's maglev demonstration line has not undergone a major overhaul since it was put into commercial operation in 2006. Due to less maintenance, it requires fewer maintenance personnel, which is only about one-tenth of the wheel rail high-speed rail. It can be said that a lot of cost can be saved in the later period. This account can still be calculated over a long period of time. So, will the fare of high-speed maglev be more expensive than that of high-speed rail? As high-speed rail prices increase, will high-speed maglev break the ceiling again? The answer is probably yes, but not too much. Based on the comprehensive consideration of construction costs and operating costs, as long as the passenger flow is sufficient, the high-speed maglev will not have a big deficit. Its high speed itself provides a competitive advantage, and as long as the price is right, it is easy to achieve high attendance rates. 
Another point is that maglev lines are not compatible with other rail transit. This is a negative factor for its passenger flow. At the same time, high-speed maglev trains can only have one station every 100 kilometers, and the number of stops is relatively small. These factors also determine that high-speed maglev is unlikely to significantly increase ticket prices and turn itself into expensive waste. How determined will China be to accelerate the implementation of high-speed maglev lines? This depends on actual needs. A very important consideration is that when the construction of highways and high-speed rail gradually enters the saturation stage, the infrastructure maniacs also need new models to expand the scale of infrastructure-driven economy. Is it possible that in the future, the five urban agglomerations connected by the Red Channel will all be integrated into a larger high-speed maglev network, allowing all the most powerful urban agglomerations in China to enter a three-hour traffic circle? As you can imagine, this is definitely a big move that will change China's economic landscape. More importantly, in the current global game, one of China's most important competitive advantages is its super infrastructure output capability. The field of high-speed maglev may become a key battle in the next round of global infrastructure competition. Although the maglev train was first proposed and developed by German scientists, Germany has not made much progress in commercial operation. Currently, Japan is China's main competitor in the international high-speed maglev market. As early as the 1990s, Japan's high-speed maglev trains exceeded the speed test of 500 and 550 km per hour and have traveled a total of 300,000 km on the Yamanashi test line, with a maximum passenger speed of 581 km per hour. In 2014, Japan officially started construction of the world's first superconducting maglev high-speed railway with a top speed of 505 km per hour. The first phase is from Tokyo to Nagoya, covering a total distance of 286 km, and is scheduled to open to traffic in 2027. The second phase is from Nagoya to Shin-Osaka and is scheduled to open to traffic in 2045. This line took more than 40 years from planning to construction. Does China have any hope of catching up with Japan? Totally possible. At present, China has basically achieved independent research and development capabilities for the entire high-speed maglev system, and has formed a complete set of engineering technologies to achieve independent and controllable industrial supporting capabilities. From a technical point of view, high-speed maglev technology can be divided into normal conduction maglev, high-temperature superconducting maglev, and low-temperature superconducting maglev. China is advancing hand-in-hand -hand on the three technical routes. It can be said that in terms of high-speed maglev technology, China has the strength to compete head-on with Japan. Just as the high-speed rail industry defeated Japan in the battle for the Jakarta-Bandung high-speed railway and became China's national business card exported overseas, high-speed maglev technology as a more advanced future technology is likely to become the next battlefield for fierce confrontation. In particular, the low operating and maintenance costs of high-speed maglev are hugely attractive to countries with low industrial levels. In the vast expanse of Africa and the Middle East, infrastructure maniacs have great potential. Playing this big game well is of extraordinary significance to China. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.